Well, good afternoon, Ed Warnock. Uh, how are you doing and where are you? Hi, Jamie. It's uh, good to see you. I'm uh, sitting here in Oregon, uh, in the Portland, Oregon area, enjoying a bright and sunny day. Obviously, um, very different experience from the weather that you were having in August of last year. In fact, this is probably the first true summer that you've gotten to experience in a while. It is. Uh, my wife, Linda, and I were talking about it the other day, saying that we have, uh, with Perlin, we have lived a life of all winters. We experience winter in the northern hemisphere, and then we follow the Perlin south and experience another winter in Argentina, only to come back and get ready for another winter. And this is the first time we've actually experienced summer since uh, 2015. COVID-19, of course, has uh, changed the plan for Paralon, just like so much of the rest of the world in 2020. Uh, but what's the current status of the program and the project team? Uh, the the Perlin project right now is uh, focused on uh, the preparation needed to move to phase three of the Airbus Perlin mission two. Uh, phase one was build, phase two was uh, flight testing with some science uh, effort and now we're moving into a phase where the flight testing is near nearing completion. It will be completed when we finally reach 90,000 feet, but our effort right now is uh, working on using the Perlin as a scientific platform. And what are some of the changes or modifications that will be made to the aircraft going into the 2021 season from a, an instrumentation or data collection standpoint? We're adding a couple of new instruments. One of them was developed by Airbus A cubed in Silicon Valley. It looks at near horizon satellites um, to see the strength of the signal coming from that satellite. And the signal strength uh, can be used to determine humidity. And there is uh, a great possibility of putting these instruments in uh, aircraft all over the world and getting better humidity uh, samples uh, or humidity readings that go into weather models. And we'll be testing that equipment and getting humidity readings out of the Perlin at very high altitude. So that's being done. We're also looking at uh, possibly modifying the aircraft to uh, carry additional scientific research equipment uh, that uh, would require some significant changes to the plane if, if we decide to go that direction. And what are the characteristics of the aircraft itself that make it such an ideal atmospheric research platform? The, the Perlin is zero emissions, so we are able to sample air that's not polluted by ourselves. Uh, a powered airplane leaves behind a wake of combustion material, and Perlin doesn't do that. We are also steerable. Balloons can go to the altitudes where we go, but they, they drift with the, with the air. We're able to go where the scientists point us. We're even able to penetrate against the winds in the polar vortex. We can actually go into the wind and uh, explore many different parts of, of the stratospheric waves. So steerable and non-polluting make Perlin unique for some scientific endeavors. And apart from your scientific objectives, I know um, you and other members of the team are, are very passionate about the inspiration element of the Airbus Parallel 2 mission. Uh, what about this is still inspirational to you? And um, what do you think people should be excited about for the 2021 season? If you're a person who enjoys uh, adventure, if you're a person who has uh, innate curiosity, uh, then Perlin is, is, a, is an excellent place to go spend your time. If you're curious about what's happening miles over your head in the atmosphere that uh, most, most of us have little knowledge of, then Perlin is an opportunity to go there and see what's happening. We called the stratosphere the stratosphere because we thought it was perfectly flat, and it turns out the biggest waves on the planet are up there. They affect the weather around the world. They sometimes turn into white water, and they break and, and churn and mix the stratosphere. And so uh, two things. If you're, if you're curious about that, uh, Perlin is, is fabulous. If you're curious about whether wings could be used on Mars, uh, 
Perlin is flying in a Martian-like environment. This is a this is a chance to get get answers. So uh, and then there's just the pure adventure. Uh, there are times that that uh, you you can't go to sleep at night because the team has just accomplished something that has never been accomplished before in aviation. Uh, flown at an altitude that no airplane like ours has ever flown at. Done something that is unique. And between the two, adventure and curiosity, it's uh, it's enough to keep you engaged. So it was September 2nd of uh, 2018 when the aircraft reached 76,000 plus feet. And I assume that's one of those moments you're referring to uh, when it was a little hard to sleep uh, the night afterward. What's the next big champagne popping moment that you guys anticipate uh, for uh, hopefully the 2021 season? The 76,000 foot level uh, was a was a benchmark in that we flew higher than the U-2 uh, has officially flown. And uh, the next benchmark, even though we, we we try not to chase records, but the records are something that are one of those uh, one of those moments that where you pop the champagne cork and you say symbolically, if we can fly higher than the SR-71 was able to maintain level flight, then we become not the highest flying subsonic airplane in history, but we become the highest flying airplane. Period. Uh, that's that's uh, that has a crew. So we'll have carried a crew and sustained level flight at a higher level. It's an aviation first. And that, again, is a time when uh, the corks will pop. The design limit of the aircraft is 90,000 feet. Um, doesn't sound like that much more than 76,000 feet, but there's actually a, a very significant difference in terms of air density and uh, the piloting challenges associated with uh, going that extra distance. Uh, that's correct. About every 18,000 feet, the air density is cut in half. And uh, at 90,000 feet, we will be moving into what uh, test pilots call the coffin corner. You have uh, a limiting speed called the never exceed speed. And this is the limit that the engineers say you can fly your airplane above that. You're likely to overstress it. Above that, you may get uncontrollable flutter that could be destructive to the airframe. And below that speed is your stall speed. So we're tucking right into that corner where if we fly a little bit faster, we're flying faster than our design limit, which is dangerous. And if we fall, fly a little bit slower, we'll stall the airplane. Is there any thought about um, a future parallel aircraft that might be designed with a wing optimized to go to even higher altitudes? You know, there 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 is a Perlin 3 concept that, uh, is is in the the conceptualization stage and it includes a transonic wing which would allow us to push the flight envelope higher it would push that coffin corner up to maybe 110,000 feet or higher well and one final question uh what are you missing the most this summer about being in el calafate with the team well besides the uh satisfying your urge for adventure and your curiosity, I, I, I miss the team. The Perlin team is made up of uh, uh, fabulously interesting people that normally you wouldn't have a chance to get to know. And we all come together on the project. And when you can't be with them, you miss them. Well, Ed Warnock, CEO of the Perlin Project, it has been a pleasure speaking with you as always. And I hope we can do this again uh, sometime soon in person. I hope that uh, we get together in Argentina for the 90,000 foot flight soon. Thanks, Ed. Take care.